Hi, I'm John Bruff, and welcome to Around Town. Today, we're exploring Ithaca, home to Cornell and a dynamo mayor, Savante Mirek. Filled with beautiful restaurants, beautiful scenery, and delicious drinks, we're exploring everything you need to know to have the best time in the area. So today, we're starting off with Bar Argos, the best place to have cocktails, whether you're just dropping the kids off at daycare and need to come to relax, or if you just want to come for a late night drink. They're open until 10 p.m. and I'm going to go talk to the owner, Avi Smith, and he's going to show us everything they have stirred up for us. So let's go inside. And the famous Avi Smith. Welcome. So nice to meet you. You too. Thank you for having us. Have a seat. Absolutely. So we're here at beautiful Bar Argos. What was this home? Was this a home before you transformed it? It was. Well, it was actually office space most recently when I bought the place in the end of 2009. Um, it was built in 1831 as a private home. There was a couple Ithaca presidents, which is what they called the mayors back then, that, that lived here. Um, it's been office space ever since the 1940s when Roy Park purchased it and actually he purchased Duncan Hines brand at the same time and it was the Duncan Hines world headquarters for about 20 years or so, you know, and like then now, mix. and now drinks, <laughs> and so now, now drinks. So yeah, it's it's uh, when I bought it, it'd been office space for about 50 years, and and just basically gutted the whole place, renovated it, kept all the old architectural details, and had a lot of fun. Yeah, remaking it. Right. So what makes a special cocktail? <laughs> well, that's a good question. The bartenders are um, a, a bit more um, experienced and skilled with the exact ingredients and what goes in it. They can give you a better description, but I can tell you sort of briefly what the customer experience is like when they... A when strong we, cocktail. We like a strong one. Oh, yeah. There's some good ones. There's some strong ones. Uh, I, I really wanted it to be a, you know, a, a, a good menu, but if people don't actually know all the items on the menu or specifically what they want, just to be able to Tell the bartenders what they're in the mood for, perhaps just a spirit, you know, just uh, the general flavors that are involved and that type of thing, or just what kind of mood they're in today. And the bartenders are very good at just sort of interpreting the type of drink that they would like. So they can order something specifically off the menu if they want to, or they can just sort of give a general description to the bartender. And they're really good at just making just the right drink for folks. And you just have created the most perfect atmosphere here. It's relaxing. There's all these different rooms. The patio back there, you said, is open uh, in the summer, extended hours. Yeah, it's open year round. Uh, there's a smoking area back there and a place people lounge out sometimes. Sometimes there's a fire pit, but yeah, it's particularly nice in the summertime. And then 13 rooms, it's a boutique hotel too, so don't forget, come and stay with them if you can. And the rooms, are they one bedroom or are they? Um, there's a couple of suites up there as well, but they're mostly yeah, one bedroom rooms. Um, you know, it was a lot of fun redoing the place and sort of redoing all the old architectural details, but making it feel more modern on like some older buildings that are museums or fancy old inns that are much more frilly and not really a place you'd like to relax in. This is, you know, we did all the old architectural details, but all the decor and furniture is, is, a, is a bit more comfortable for actually lounging out in. Well, you've yeah. done a terrific job, and we are about to go taste some of the drinks with the bartender who's going to give us an insight on what makes a great drink. So, Mr. Smith, thank you very much. Yeah. You might have to help me out of here after all these cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we we'll go try? We'll go check it out now. Why don't we go? Okay, sounds good. Bar managers, Nick and Tippy. How's it going? I think they have some more questions Nick, about the drinks. Hi, Nick. Yeah, welcome Tippy, to Bar Argos. thank you very much. And Mr. Smith, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I think we'll start with these guys. Sounds good. All right, thank you. Okay, so we have some cocktails here. Yeah. Okay, so tell me what we have here. What's, let's start with this one on the end. That one is, uh, we call it Bagpipe Mariachi mm -hmm. um, because it blends two different spirits. Um, Backpipe being from Scotland. It's got the Islay single malt scotch on top um, and tequila. Who doesn't love tequila? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. So who, you would serve this to what? Like someone who likes, wants something refreshing, mm -hmm. little pick-me-up, maybe, sure. yeah. Someone who's feeling a little bit adventurous, who maybe wants a tequila drink, something a little bit refreshing, but also not afraid of very aggressive flavors like peat and smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's very great summer drink. Very, very refreshing. This is one of our wildest flavor combinations, mm -hmm. and it has a cult following around town. Like, there's a crew of people that just love the bagpipe mariachi. We could never take it off the menu. <laughs> All right, and what's this one, Tippy? That's the Trade Winds. 
Uh, this is a classic cocktail that we're featuring right now. We didn't create it. Um, featuring coconut milk, gin, oh, wow. apricot liqueur, lemon juice. Yep. Super fruity and refreshing. Delicious. Yeah, I always like to say that the trade wind sort of belongs to the herbal essence collection of cocktails. It's very fragrant. It's delicious to drink. At some point, you kind of want to take a shower with it as well. <laughs> and it comes with an umbrella. Who doesn't like that? Yeah. And this one, what is this? I had a sip of this before. This was delicious. Mm, yeah. So what do we have here? Uh, we call that the quicksand because it looks a little bit like sand, and you drink it quick. Um, we yeah, got it's dangerous. vodka to sort of dilute the very aggressive flavors of the chocolate and the orange um, and the cream of coconut. I was going to say you can taste the coconut. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Yeah, the cream of coconut adds that rich texture to it. Um, the same with the trade winds. Yeah, the sweetness in that drink comes from the absinthe, which mm -hmm. is why it's being served in a traditional absinthe glass. Right. And then the tiki, the star of the show. And you have a tiki bar up there too, I see, right? Is that for the, for the season? Yes, this is for the season. We always feature a different theme for each menu. Uh, this one right now for summer is summer of tiki. Uh, this has been one of the most complete menu overhauls where it's not just the drinks that we've created, but also the classics that we're featuring are all tiki. What flavors are in this? I can't differ. differ got a lot of rich flavors in yes. there. Uh, got vanilla, cinnamon, coffee liqueur, blackstrap rum, which has all of this like burnt molasses flavor, bourbon really coming together there, um, to, like rich complexity. Like you are on an expedition when you drink that cocktail. It's like a smorgasbord of yeah. many different things. That's great. And then last but not least, we have this right here. That's a flying flamingo, um, loosely based on Trinidad sour. Um, we've got a full ounce of peychaud bitters there a little bit of passion fruit, lemon juice to balance that out. Um, Blanc, Armagnac. Oh my gosh. Which you wouldn't think would that is go delicious. really well in a cocktail. Uh, mm -hmm. And a little bit of Pernod. Um, and what's that? Pernod is an absinthe. Um, and absinthe all have this overarching flavor of like fennel and yeast kind of uh, from the wormwood in it. And so why should people come? Like why are the cocktails here? What sets, sets them apart? I think what sets us apart from other bars um, is that we focus on the bar because we're not a restaurant. We don't have a full food menu and we have a really talented and dedicated staff so um, we can take our time with these cocktails and these menus and uh, come up with some really creative things, do a lot of research and find a lot of really sort of obscure and forgotten cocktails as well. Absolutely, and something for, here for everyone, and there's something different than people can experience at other places. I mean, I'm you know, from New York, originally from Canada. There's very few places like this where you can go sit down, enjoy just a great cocktail in a relaxed environment, great for a first date, or even if you're breaking up, bring them here, who knows, right? <laughs> Thank you very much, this was great. Nice to meet you both. And come to the Argos Inn for a drink, for a cocktail, stay the night. Avi Smith, tell him John Bruff sent you, you'll get a great deal. Let's head to the next place. I'll see you after the break. Welcome back. We're back in Ithaca at Rev Startup Works with Brian Bauer, one of the members of the founding team. He's gonna tell us everything you need to know to start your own startup. So Brian, thank you very much for having us. Glad to be here. What do we need to know about Rev? Uh, so Rev Ithaca is a uh, startup incubator that was uh, founded four years ago here in, uh, right down in downtown Ithaca. Uh, it's operated by Cornell University, um, but it's in a partnership with Ithaca College and the local community college, TC3, uh, and we um, we're here in the community uh, supporting startups. So we're, we're helping create an ecosystem of startup businesses. And we started off a few years ago, or four years ago, with four companies uh, when we opened the doors. And today we have nearly 40 uh, as members. Um, and it's, uh, it's been a great, uh, a great start. Um, and what we do here is primarily support startups. One of the things we do, and it's a, it's a beautiful facility, is we offer flexible office space, but we also offer mentorship, programming, 
and connections, really. Connections into the That's community. That's a big key. It's a big key. It's a big key. Um, and so people come in the door maybe with an idea for a business or a product, and we offer support that can get them uh, to that place where they really understand what, they're, what the problem is that they're solving for a customer and what their product or service is and, 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 get, them, and get them going. We've had some great successes so far. Um, Which is, uh, so for who example? A couple of great examples. Um, one of our early members was a, a local startup uh, named Rosie. And Rosie um, started up actually up on, on Cornell's campus as an idea between a couple of their founders on a like a almost like a hackathon weekend that they have up at uh, at Cornell, and then they be were part of the eLab course up there, which some of the folks here support, and then they moved down here and were a member here at Rev and are, are continue to be, and they now have uh, grown to over 20, almost 30 uh, staff. They're now down on the Commons, have their own office. And uh, what Rosie does is provides um, software for independent grocery stores who want to do delivery services, for example. Terrific. So, that's an and, you, and you have a space here where people can really, I, mean, I, I earlier called it a robotic room. You said yeah. it's not that. It's like it's, a prototyping uh, right. lab. So our principle, the principle we teach, we, we don't want someone to have an idea, lock themselves up in their basement, and spend all their time and money developing something, and then come forward and find no one wants it. So we mm -hmm. teach this interactive process of working with customers as you develop your business. So test the marketplace before yeah. you take it. And so you can build your prototype in that shop. And so we have 3D printers, laser cutters, uh, CNC machines, all the equipment that you need to build a prototype and, and move quickly. So you, you don't waste time. Absolutely. That's key. And what else? So if someone wants to get involved with Rev, apply, they have a great idea, yep. how do they approach? There's, there's a couple of things you can do. You can go to our website, website which is Rev. That's R E V, like rev your engine, revithica.com, all one, all one word, revithica, and sign up for our distribution list. You can also email us there. Um, you can come have a meeting with an entrepreneur in residence. I'm one of those, but we have a half a dozen now of those. We'll talk it through uh, as to whether rev would be a good fit for you. We work with people who don't yet know exactly what their business model is. Um, and so we're not the Small Business Administration. We're partners with them. They're fabulous. Right. They, help, they help with all the basics of starting up a small business. We help you figure out who's your customer, what's your product or service really going to be like, and how do you scale that. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the pulse that runs through Ithaca. We have Cornell. We talked about earlier, Svante Mirik. I mean, there is such an energy here, creative, free-thinking people, and Rev is certainly contributing and a part of it. If you have an idea, come to Rev. They will help you out or guide you in the right direction. But this is Ithaca. This is why we love it. It's great. One other thing, we have about monthly, we have a networking event open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, sign up for uh, um, our, our mailing list at that website, and you'll hear about those events as they come up. And they're great. Uh, we sometimes have over 100 people um, come just to be part of the community here. Sometimes it's food themes. Sometimes it's clean energy is one of the big programs I run. Uh, we have the hardware program that's going on right now. So it's a great opportunity if you want to build a business. And this is a great place to do it. We're really, we're really proud of uh, what's going on here in Ithaca and in the Southern Tier. Absolutely. Well, Brian, thank you yeah, very much. Pleasure to meet you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to continue on here in Ithaca. But Rev, sign up. Give them a call. This is the place to plant your seed if you have an idea. We'll see you after the break. All right, we've just left Rev Startup Works. We're tired, we're enthralled, we're full of great ideas, but we need a place to stay. We're here at Marriott in downtown Ithaca, and it's the place to stay. They're fully modernized, just renovated, and we're gonna go in and talk to Matthew, and he's gonna show us the rooms, he's gonna show us where to eat, and everything else you need to know. So let's go check it out. All right, Matthew. Hello, John. Thank you very much for having us. It's our pleasure. We are excited to be here. Welcome to the Ithaca Marriott. We've heard such great things. We're gonna go check up at a room first, but Absolutely. what makes the Marriott the best hotel in Ithaca? 
Uh, you can't beat our location here in Ithaca. We are located directly downtown, right on the commons. Everything's within walking distance. Everything that you need to see. We're also the newest and most modern hotel that you're going to find in the local area. With the Marriott brand name, the level of service that we provide, the on-site restaurant, and the act different activities and events we have here, it's definitely a fun, unique place to stay. And when did you open? We opened in December 2016. We have 159 rooms and including a ballroom space up on the second floor that we could take a look at as well. If you I'm want. so excited. So we're going to go up and check up a room. Let's go see where we can flop on a bed. All right? Absolutely. Okay, now we're upstairs on the ninth floor. We're about to see the King Suite. Matthew has the key and we're going to go in. This is the best room that we have on property here at the Ithaca Marriott. One per floor. So you walk into the space and this is the... This is the living space where we have a pull-out sofa over here. You have a secondary TV on the wall here. We have all these are smart TVs. So they do have your Netflix, YouTube. Uh, you can upload all your accounts right to there. You can sync it to your phone? Just like you were at home. Oh, great. Absolutely. Terrific. And beautiful modern bathrooms here? Beautiful modern decor in the bathrooms. We have uh, Kohler headed showers with the adjustable nozzles as well as the glass enclosures there as well. And then let me show you the uh, And I the heard bathroom. there was a bedroom. There is a what? bedroom. I hear yes. there's a bedroom. Absolutely. Come on in. What a view. So king size bed in this uh, king size suite. You are getting a beautiful view of what's going on downtown there on Restaurant Row, as well as looking up the hill onto Cornell's campus. Oh, beautiful view of the yes, hill. Absolutely. Yes. There's a beautiful view of the hill there. Uh, you can see a little bit of the lake just out these windows up here on these top floors. Mm -hmm. uh, very uh, sought after space we're in right and here at the hotel. And this is great if you're a couple to stay here or you know, two parents while the kids are in, you know, their separate rooms. You have your own little area here. You can get away from them at night. I mean, this is, this is paradise. This Beautiful is view. Place to stay. This is the place to stay. So I think we're going to go downstairs now and get a feel for the rest of the hotel. But um, let's go down. We've seen the room and let's check out everything else they have to offer. Let's go. All right, Matt, we've just left the beautiful King Suite on the ninth floor, which is on every floor, and now we're back in the lobby. Correct. We're gonna enjoy a little snack here and go over everything else that Marriott has to offer. So what we have here is uh, Chef concocted a field salad for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the many items that we have on our, on our menu, which serves kind of a gastro pub style food. Uh, we also do so obviously serve breakfast for our hotel guests and for anybody who wanted to come in and check it out. And there is a brunch menu that's available on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, dinner is served till about 10 p.m. Mimosas? Mimosas, of course we do mimosas, Bloody Mary specials on the weekends. Uh, on certain days we have uh, different events going on at Monks to help bring people in and to make sure everybody's having a good time. Uh, one of which is happening tonight, we are having live music on our patio in conjunction with the concert series which is going on on the Commons. And you said there's some concert every Thursday? Every Thursday night there is a concert. Uh, Saturdays on the, uh, during the summertime we're going to have live music out there as well. Mm -hmm. um, we try to become part of the community here in Ithaca. So we always have something that's going to be going along with that. There was a marathon that was run recently and we actually live streamed that marathon here on our patio. Mm -hmm. That's what makes Ithaca so great. That's what makes Ithaca so great. And look what I found everyone. <laughs> I found an exploding kittens game underneath here. A card game for people who are into kittens and explosions and laser beams. I mean if this doesn't make you want to come here, I don't know what will, alright? Absolutely. We always have these board games down here for people to play at all times. We do bring them out on Mondays so people can enjoy that in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Tuesdays trivia night. Uh, Wednesdays is a monks and friends where we have wine and food pairing from different local eateries from the area. So there's always something going on down here. There is always something going on here. Well, Matt, thank you very, very much for all your help in showing us around here. Thank you, if you are staying, when you're staying in Ithaca, come stay at the Marriott. There is no better place to stay. You're right on the commons. You have the bar here open all night long, 1 a.m. for drinks, food 24-7. You have Lacey, you have Matt at the front. What more could you possibly want? 
Come stay here, it'll be worth your while. We're gonna go now take a walk on the famous Ithaca Commons, get a lay of the land before we wrap everything up. We'll see you there. And Matt, John, thank, thank you, you again. My pleasure. Welcome back. Now, to finish the day in Ithaca, what better way than to skydive? I know it's a little adventurous, but do you know what? We gotta try everything. So I'm here at Skydive Finger Lakes, and I'm gonna meet Jeff Foster, and he wants me to put on this, and we're gonna get all the rundown and the info and how to get up in the air. So let's get started. All right, I'm all dressed. Now let's go see Jeff Foster and get this all started. Let's go. Jeff. Howdy, John. I'm so excited to be nice here. Nice to meet you. So I'm all suited up. Looking like a skydiver. I'm looking like a skydiver. So what's the whole process like from top to bottom? So you come here, uh, do you need an hour before you take off? or what? We, we, uh, we schedule you for an hour appointment time. So noon, one, two o'clock, we schedule two, two per hour. Um, you show up at the time you're scheduled for. Um, it's a really simple process for your first skydive. Uh, we really just want to show you a good time, get you that first experience under your belt um, so that your nerves are a little less if you continue on the progression to learn how to skydive. I'm sure uh, most people are so nervous when they could. Do they, do they bring a copy of their will or what? <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely times where people have uh, updated their will for yes. this event. Yeah, um, and make sure their life insurance is uh, you know, paid, paid up, up right. to date, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but generally, um, your only uh, preparation you need to have is uh, wear sneakers that are laced up that stay on your feet and bring your photo ID right. um, wear comfortable clothing for the weather so shorts t-shirt because the suit is pretty heavy and, and yep, thick. suits pretty warm um, it's pretty thick uh, we generally uh, don't use those during the summer months those are more used for the spring and the fall months always welcome to wear one no matter what if you wanted to mm -hmm. um, but generally we find that uh, jumping in your street clothes is much more comfortable. Much more. Yeah. And what are these for? These. That's for when you're actually training to become a skydiver. Your instructor is when you were wearing your own parachute, instead of wearing a student harness for a tandem jump, you'd have your own parachute on. Your instructor is going to hold on to these as you leave the plane to keep a, ha to keep, keep a grip on you as you leave the plane um, for the training process. Uh, for your first solo skydive, we're going to hold on to you for the whole skydive. You're going to practice touch your handles. So the um, first skydive, you're tandem. You're with somebody well, else. Okay, so this is uh, your first solo skydive. So after you finish the tandem progression, there's a five jump process with the tandem progression. Oh, wow. Right, um, where you're learning a lot of um, things. You're pulling the parachute, you're helping land the parachute, you're turning in free fall and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> lots That's of stuff good. to so learn it's not on just the tandem. You, yeah. you don't just go once and then you're like, I'm free. I right, can go. no, no. There's, a, there's the five tandem progression. Your first tandem is obviously just come out, have a good time, get that first experience out, of, out under your belt, and uh, get all those nerves out from, under, uh, from, uh, from you. And then we progress to actually you know, performing things on the skydive, pulling the parachute, turning in free fall, tracking, um, all sorts of stuff stuff that you're learning to progress to your own parachute. So you can have a lot more fun. That's the, all the pictures of people holding hands yes. in the air. And that's also and what these are the for. Flips. So if you were, if you, we are not, if you and I were doing a two way skydive and we were building formations, these are what we would come up for. These are our targets. Grab me yep. and yep. maneuver. Exactly. Terrific. Yep. Now why don't we take a look at the plane? Sure. Let's go see. This is a Cessna 182. So 200 plus horsepower. Okay. We have a pilot and then four, four jumpers in the plane. So jumper here, jumper here, one in the back and another jumper there. So if it's tandems, we take two at a time. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, sport jumpers, um, four skydivers will go up, but always four skydivers go up because of the, uh, the seating arrangement. So four at a time. Right. <clears throat> How high in the air do you go? We go generally to 10,000 feet unless you're learning to skydive and then we'll go up to 11,000 feet just to give you an extra five, six seconds of time to uh, you know, perform your objectives. And how, how long uh, time-wise is it down to the ground? So we exit the plane as a tandem pair. We're gonna exit the, the plane at about 10,000 feet. You're gonna free fall for approximately 30 to 40 seconds. It depends on how much the student weighs. Um, okay. The more you weigh, the faster you go. So the less free fall time you get. Okay. We deploy the parachute around about 5,500 feet. That's our, mm -hmm. our required um, minimum opening altitude for a tandem skydive. Um, so you get about approximately five to seven minutes of parachute ride. It all depends on how much you like to spin. So the, you know, the more you spin, a, the faster you come out of the that's sky. That's a great amount of time. Yeah, five, it's 
I'm just much seven better than minutes. a roller coaster. Oh yeah. my gosh! There's no lines. You're not standing in any two-hour lines to get on a 60-second roller is coaster. Quiet? Here. Is it quiet? It's very quiet, quiet once the parachute opens. So we're going about 120 mile an hour in free fall, which is very noisy. For what? About 30, about 30, 30 35 seconds. seconds or so in free fall. So 120 to 130 mile an hour in free fall, and then once the parachute opens, we slow down to 20, 25 mile an hour. Wow. So it's very peaceful, very quiet. Um, the views here are just stunning. I mean, we've, we're right smack between the two largest Finger Lakes, and we can see on a good day nine of the of eleven of the Finger Lakes. So the views are just spectacular. Um, that's pretty much why most of our customers come to us is our, is our view. It's uh, there's nothing quite like it here. No. All right, John, go ahead and put your feet in the loops there. Okay. All right, now elbows back like a jacket. There you go. And this is tied to the parachute? This is what you're gonna connect to me with. We've got two okay. very, very strong 10,000 pound hooks right here. Mm -hmm. These are the two main hooks that keep you to me. And then we've got two lighter hooks here that basically just keep your hips tight to me. Mm -hmm. This is so that we don't spread apart and become a propeller we in the sky. We don't want that. These are the ones that actually hold you to me. Yeah, we don't want that. No. <laughs> You know, I've always wanted to do this. Looking forward to it, yeah. man. Hold those right there. Now, once I'm finished with these leg straps, you're gonna wanna make sure all the furniture's in the center of the room. Okay. You don't wanna take that ride. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line. Yeah. <laughs> all right, one more strap back here and you are ready to skydive, sir. Not bad. Now it stays loose on the ground, okay? Mm -hmm. It's because you're standing right now. Right. We sit down in the plane. When we get connected to each other, everything's gonna tighten up for you, okay? So don't tighten anything down for me. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure you're secure in it. And we've got your goggles here for before we exit the plane. That'll protect your eyes for the free fall. Once the parachute opens, we can take those off so you get a good view of everything. I am all set to go skydiving. So you have all the information you need. Get to Skydive Finger Lakes now. I don't know what you're waiting for. Me neither. Jeff and I are <laughs> gonna go up. We'll see you soon. We've had a terrific day in Ithaca. We're now on the commons walking around. We've gone skydiving. We've gone to Bar Argos. We've gone to Rev. And now we're on the strip where everyone walks up and down. We have families, people walking up and down, bars, restaurants, shops. This is the place to be. If you want to open up a shop, this is where you want to do it. Lots of foot traffic. But I'm going to go look at a few shops here. I mean, I've got all the time in the world, and you should too. Come down to Ithaca, and hopefully you can see me here, and I hope to see you around town or wherever your travels may take you. I'll see you around.